We're in the middle of March and I've run out of my homemade spaghetti sauce made from tomatoes I grew in my garden. So to get me through until the garden is booming, I'm going to make spaghetti sauce from canned tomatoes. Hey friends, it's Barbara Sue from Kowalski Mountain and welcome back to the homestead. Now today is a pretty warm day here in March. It's a little cool, but comfortable enough to be outside in short sleeves. And I am going to make some homemade spaghetti sauce. When I was at Sam's, I bought tomatoes and tomato sauce in bulk so that I could make a big batch of spaghetti sauce. Now we're gonna can this in the pressure canner to preserve it, and I'm gonna bring you along for the ride. Hey friends, I'm gonna interrupt right here super quick to tell you that this video took a turn. Now this was just intended to be a normal cooking video and show you how I make some spaghetti sauce. But I learned an important lesson along the way and I'm gonna tell you all about it. So stick around. Now this is a recipe I found online and there's all kinds of recipes online. Some start from stewed tomatoes, but this one actually starts from diced tomatoes and tomato sauce. And I really liked that idea because it's gonna speed up the process quite a bit. Now, like all of my recipes, my recipe is in my Recipe Keeper app. And one of the features of Recipe Keeper is you have the ability to adjust a recipe and it's going to do all the math for us. So let me show you. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell it to adjust. And I've already done the math. I'm, it's going to be 54 servings. I'm gonna push okay. And that transformed my recipe to use 12 cans of diced tomatoes and 12 cans of tomato sauce. The thing I like about this is that when I am done with this recipe and the adjustments, I can tell it to reset and it's gonna go right back to the way it was. But for the sake of making this recipe in bulk, Recipe Keeper did all the work for me and did all the math. Now let's go ahead and let's start putting this together. Now I really like to cook in the outdoor kitchen because I don't have the space limitations that I do in the RV. Now I haven't really taken time to set up a table and make this super easy, which I probably should, but I'm just gonna make it work. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to get all of this canned goods into this big pot. So I have a dozen cans of tomato sauce. Now it's the addition of the diced tomatoes that is gonna make this seem more like homemade than making it just from canned tomatoes. Now we're gonna add some tomato paste. And I actually bought this at Walmart and I didn't need as many anyway, so Buying it at Walmart and buying what I needed was better than buying a whole case. So now I'm gonna add some of the additional spices. Now most of these are in really nice increments that I can work with, but some of them aren't. Like it calls for 24 tablespoons of sugar. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna measure out 24 tablespoons. So I used an online calculator to determine that that's gonna be a cup and a half and we're gonna do that. So it's a cup and a half of sugar. And we're gonna do six teaspoons of basil. Now this is a one and a half teaspoon, so that's gonna make this go a little bit faster. The wind is getting me a little bit. 
<laughs> blowing my spices. We're going to do the same with the oregano. Now some of these spices I'm going to be careful with my measurements. Like it also calls for six teaspoons of pepper. I'm going to do that cautiously. I don't want to get too crazy. So I'm going to start by adding maybe half as much pepper and I can always add more, but I can't take it away. So we're going to do it careful. We're going to add some salt. Now we're also going to add some red pepper flakes and this is another thing that I'm going to do so carefully. It actually calls for 12 teaspoons. I'm going to start out with three. I am not going to get too crazy with that. I can always add more. So now we're going to stir this all together and I have a long handled wooden spoon which makes this so much easier because I don't have to worry about losing this in my pot. I'm lucky enough that my dad carved this for me but you can find long handled spoons for your big canning projects. I call this my cauldron spoon. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some Italian seasoning. Now Italian seasoning has some of those same seasonings in it as well, but it also has marjoram. I don't know how to say that spice. Thyme, rosemary, savory, sage, oregano, and basil. So it has a little bit more than what we've already put in it. I'm going to add that. And it looks like I'm out. So about three teaspoons of that. Now it still tastes a little bit mild, but I'm going to let it cook a little bit before I make a decision if I'm going to add some more of the pepper or the red pepper flakes or even any of the other ingredients. Now this is just a recipe I found online. I have not made it before and we are going to definitely flavor it to my likings so that I enjoy it. Let's get it cooking. Now it says to let the recipe cook for about 30 minutes. Now this is a pretty big pot, so I'm probably gonna let it cook a little bit longer than that. I want all those herbs and spices to really immerse throughout the entire pot of sauce. And once it's cooked for a while, we're gonna check the seasonings and season it to taste. I am so glad that I took it easy on those spices because it's a little spicy. Now I'm not super thrilled with the flavor so I'm going to add some minced onion and some garlic powder and maybe a little bit more salt.
Now the bad thing about cooking on this outdoor burner is I don't have as fine of control of the heat. I can only get it so low, so I just have to really watch it from there. I've been stirring this every few minutes to make sure it doesn't burn on the bottom. I'm much happier with the flavor. I still think it's a tiny bit spicy. I think I could have gone down with the pepper a little bit. Not necessarily the red pepper, I was careful with that, but the regular pepper, I think I could have gone down to just a teaspoon and that would have been enough. Hopefully the flavor will not enhance in the jar <laughs> or we might be in trouble. But otherwise, I think this is gonna be good. All right, so let's go ahead and get it in the jars and get it in the pressure canner. All right, the first batch is in the pressure canner. So these are quart jars, so they're gonna pressure can for 25 minutes. Now, once this starts to boil, we're gonna let it vent. And once the venting's done, we will add the pressure gauge and we will get the process started. Well, friends, this video took a turn that I did not expect. And I apologize, I didn't film some of the sections that I wish I had, but that's all right, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Now my spaghetti sauce was in the pressure canner and it was, I was already timing my processing and I was close by and I was listening to it. Now if you've watched any of my other canning videos, you know that I have a dial gauge pressure canner, but I use a weighted regulator that regulates the pressure inside my pressure canner. This will jiggle and I can hear how it's doing. If it's gently jiggling, I know everything is fine. If it's furiously jiggling, I've got a problem. Well, I was going about doing my regular tasks around the farm and I looked at the pressure canner. My pressure was about 17 pounds of pressure, which is way too high for my altitude. I should be at the 10 and 11 pound range. Well, I immediately turned the heat down on my burner 
And when I did that, this stopped jiggling immediately. I knew right then I had a problem. This regulator can't lie. This is based on weight and it's, it's just physics. If the weight is over what this allows, it makes this jiggle. If it's under, it's not gonna jiggle. This was gonna tell me the tale. So I had to make a decision right then how to handle this because obviously I want to can safely. I don't want the pressure to increase to an unsafe zone, but I felt pretty confident because for one, this was not jiggling furiously. It was jiggling as I would have expected it to. So I went ahead and I turned the heat back up to where it should be. This started jiggling again, and I determined to keep my eye on it. So I did, and I got through my time, and I let my pressure canner cool off. Well, when I opened my pressure canner, my jars had made a mess. They had siphoned very badly, and none of them sealed. Now, the other thing I noticed when my pressure canner cooled was that my gauge is at five pounds of pressure. Well, this cover is not even on the pressure canner. So obviously there's not five pounds of pressure on this gauge. So I knew then that this was the problem, not my weighted gauge, which I trusted. So I decided to go ahead and finish the spaghetti sauce and I would closely watch it and see what happened. And it did the same thing. The pressure rose to about 17. Five plus 11 would be 16. So 17 was in a safe zone for my canning and my regulator was performing as I expected. So I went ahead and finished the last of the spaghetti sauce and I felt like it was gonna be okay. When I opened that pressure canner, one of the lids was popped off. I had terrible siphoning again and only two jars in all the jars that I did sealed. While my pressure canner wasn't performing like it should, I didn't feel like that was the problem. Now, as you know, I was canning outside on the outdoor burner. And you might also know that some of your pressure canners don't recommend use on outdoor burners. Now I do, um, and I'm comfortable doing so. Now the reason that these companies don't recommend using an outdoor burner is because the BTUs on those burners are, is very high. So mine has a max rating of 60,000 BTUs, which is too high for my pressure canner. But I use it on a low setting and I felt comfortable doing that. I was sure it was the burner that caused the problem that despite the fact that I had it on its very lowest setting, it was still too hot and it was causing everything in the pressure canner to happen too fast. That would account for all my siphoning. That would account for the mess and the popped off lids that all of that spaghetti sauce was boiling in those jars and causing a problem. So now I have a problem where I have a ton of spaghetti sauce and I have an RV. I don't have room in my refrigerator for all of that spaghetti sauce. So I needed a solution. I went all over town and tried to find a new gauge for my pressure canner. This is a replaceable part, so I'm able to replace it and ensure that the pressure is correct on my pressure canner. The manufacturers of your pressure canners do recommend that you get these tested on an annual basis. And I'll admit I've never had it tested and I've never had a problem until now. Well, I went all over town and I couldn't find one locally. So I ended up ordering a new one on Amazon, which is actually sitting in my mailbox today. And I'm gonna be able to replace that problem. But I still had about three days that I needed to wait to get that part so that I could finish my spaghetti sauce. Now I was positive it was the burner because even though this wasn't working, this was not gonna lie to me. This was going to tell me the truth and I trusted that this was gonna regulate my pressure canner accurately. So what I did was I used my other burner. Now I have two outdoor burners. I have the big double one 
which I like that one. I like having two burners. I like that it's taller, but it is really hard to regulate. It doesn't go down low. My other burner is a turkey fryer burner, also still highly rated at about 50,000 BTUs, but it does allow for much finer tuning of the heat and I can turn it down much lower. Now I've successfully pressure canned on that turkey burner many times and I didn't recall ever doing any pressure canning on the double burner. So I went on a limb and decided to reprocess all of my food using the different burner. Now if you've never had to reprocess something, it's not actually fun. I have reprocessed things in the past where I just take the jar and I put it in another batch in the pressure canner and I push it through, like if I have one jar. But the right way to do it, because spaghetti sauce is hot packed, the right way is to empty all of the jars, to heat the sauce again, fill all the jars again, put new lids on them, and reprocess them just like you would any other time. And that's what I ended up doing. That wasn't the fun way, and it was double the work, but my hunch was correct. All of my jars sealed on the next go round. I did two loads through the canner, and everything is sealed. This one actually sealed the first round, as did this one. Those both sealed the first time around. All the rest of these had to be reprocessed a second go around. But I can tell because the lids are compressed that everything is sealed. Now I did still have some siphoning, especially on the second batch I put through. By the time I got to the second batch, I was a little braver with my canner and I was trusting my regulator that I knew it was working properly. And I was also having a little bit more wind then, so I turned up the heat a little bit on my burner. So I had more siphoning on the second go round than I did the first. But I got it all finished. Now, whether or not you use an outdoor burner is up to you. Like anything we do canning, it's up to you in your kitchen how you're gonna handle it. And in our living situation, the outdoor burner makes a huge difference in my ability to get things done. I have learned some important lessons. First off, check your equipment. I use this all the time. I used it multiple times throughout January. I use it all the time canning broth. I never look at this gauge. I should have noticed that this pressure was at five pounds of pressure when it was off. You also need to be checking, you need to be checking that this is freely moving. You're supposed to look through this and make sure you can see through it all the time. You just hold it up to the light. If you can see the light through it, you're okay. And you also should inspect your ceiling ring. And those are areas that I have not done as often as I should have, and it costs me a lot of time. The other lesson I learned is I'm not gonna use that big outdoor burner for pressure canning. It works perfectly for water bath canning, but it's too much heat for my pressure canner, and so I'll need to use my turkey burner. Now my new dial gauge is out in my mailbox, and I will have this replaced, and I will know that I can trust my pressure canner in its entirety, but honestly, this was my saving grace. Had I not had this, I would have been freaked out about the pressure change. Yes, I was concerned, but I was trusting this and it allowed me to finish my canning and get the job done. I'm an even bigger fan of this than I was before. Well, friends, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I did create a printable recipe card of this spaghetti sauce recipe. Now I'll include the link to the original recipe, but I'm also including all the alterations I made to it, the extra ingredients I add, and also the increase of ingredients to make the big batch using a full case of tomatoes. 
Well, friends, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching to the very end. We really appreciate it. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, hit that button. We'd love you to be a part of the Kowalski Mountain family. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.